herb. Herb is a plant. I mean, herbs are good for everything. Welcome to Gene Cannabis TV. You got Dank here, show's host, and uh, co-host here with me is Jeremy. Our friend Jeremy is back. We're going to talk about some stories, make some commentary, make some comments on some commentaries, I guess you'd say. Want to talk real quick. Our friend Zener has come up with a website to help patients uh, find growers. Now, it's always been a problem through, ever since the Mar Mar Marijuana Act became the uh, excuse me, the Medical Marijuana Act became a law. It's been a problem patients trying to find growers and just recently I've had experience on my worst difficulty I've ever had trying to find a grower for a patient. So our friend Zener, an occasional uh, ECTV technician, uh, helps out here now and then. He came up and made a website and we're going to talk about it in detail later but I just want to uh, mention that anybody out there is a patient looking for a grower or need a grower uh, or if you're a grower looking for a patient, uh, the whole thing, uh, we have a, uh, this website been set up and you can join it, there's no cost. You can uh, uh, communicate back and forth freely between each pe person with no organization to interfere. So we'll be talking about that in detail later, so listen up. And the uh, fundraiser, you'll notice all these t-shirts around. Well, we've got, I've got a bunch of t-shirts that I've gathered over the years, you know, and for the, I wear them on the show, and, and I'm getting to give you quite a supply of them. So I thought, I need to start cutting back on these, and we also need money for the head fest. So light bulb went off in a moment of inspiration. I decided, let's uh, do a donation uh, fundraiser for the head fest. So any t-shirt you see is up for a donation, and get a hold of us, and give us a, make us a donation, and we'll get you two together. Uh, I've got some great shirts here. Uh, I've had compliments on all of them, so... Uh, that's something to look at out and through the show and think about it. So let's start out and uh, Jeremy was going to read a uh, thing that I found on the weedblog.com. Don't support marijuana businesses that don't support you. The fight to reform marijuana laws in America has been going on since it first became illegal many decades ago. Marijuana supporters have endured a lot up public ridicule, arrest, loss of assets, etc. There, there have been victories, but only after a lot of blood, sweat, tears, and treasure was spent. One of my biggest pet peeves is when and the when profiteers heirs try to infiltrate the marijuana industry now that it's becoming more mainstream. These people only care about profits and could care less about helping people well, out, helping keep people out of jail or helping sick patients. The only thing that motivates them is greed and they would throw any marijuana activist, consumer, or patient under the bus if it made them one dollar more. These profiteers are easy to spot. They were nowhere to be found prior to recreational and medical marijuana reform victories. They have never worked on a campaign or even donated to a campaign. They, they did not stand up for what is right until after the fight was over in their area and they are now on the scene acting like they help contribute. There are dispensary owners in Colorado that encourage their customers to vote no on amendment at 64 or yet uh, are now opening recreational marijuana stores. That seems kind of ironic. There is a prominent industry a member that once stated that he will not work with the people that smell like the product. Just for the record, you can s smell like marijuana around me whenever you like because, after all, I'm a true fan of marijuana. I. I'm not someone pretending to like marijuana because it's now more profitable than opposing it. Next time you plan on spending your hard-earned money on a marijuana product or marijuana itself, do your homework. Don't support or marijuana businesses that don't support you. 
Instead, support businesses that have fought on your behalf. If the business owner wasn't around for the struggle, they shouldn't be around for the reward. And that's a really good point. And uh, there's a lot of businesses that fit in the category. And, and uh, one off the top of my head that you definitely should support is Dr. Bronner's pro uh, products. Dr. Bronner's is extremely uh, community friendly, uh, has helped out the hemp fest on several occasions, and they have a great product. So that's the kind of a, the businesses we need to support. <clears throat> and uh, I got another letter from MPP, the Marijuana Policy Project. I get these letters and they're constantly uh, looking for funds. And they make some good points in these letters, so I, I like to read them uh, occasionally. Uh, he wrote, uh, this is, uh, by the way, from, this, is, this one is from Mason Tuvert. Uh, Mason is the uh, guy that started the uh, Safer Than Alc, or uh, oh, oh, Safer, oh no. Anyway, it's a- Marijuana uh, Safer? Yeah, Marijuana Safer, where they, were, <clears throat> they went on the thing that alcohol is legal and marijuana is not, but uh, marijuana is legal, I mean uh, safer. So anyway, that's where they got the whole thing started in Colorado, and this is uh, the main guy behind it. He now works for the, he's the Director of Communications for the Marijuana Policy Project. project. <clears throat> he wrote, it's been exactly nine years since MPP provided me with a grant to move to Colorado and laying the groundwork for a future statewide ballot initiative to legalize marijuana. All that work came to fruitation yesterday when legal marijuana retail sales throughout the state opened their doors to begin selling marijuana to adults. I wanted to share one of my favorite pictures that I took of the first sale. It's a picture of Sean Azarti, an, an, an Iraq war veteran with PTSD who appeared on an American 60, or excuse me, Amendments, Amendment 64 ad, TV ad discussing his inability to legally access marijuana because his condition was not covered by Colorado's medical marijuana law. As of yesterday, he can, and he did. As I said during our news conference yesterday, which was attended by dozens of state, national, and international media outlets, adults are buying marijuana in every state in the nation. Only in Colorado are they now buying it in legitimate, tax-paying businesses instead of in an, uh, in an underground market. MPP is working to challenge that by passing similar laws in states around the country over the next few years. With your help, we are confident we can do it. So again, uh, it is a good organization, and if you do have some money to, you can help them out with, uh, that, that is a good organization to put your, put your dollars. Uh, they've said they'll be here in 2016 helping us. Uh, we, told, we, we just said, okay, well, we're still going ahead on ours, and so we're working on our initi legalization initiatives now. And while I thought I'd bring, better bring that up to update on that, uh, Initiative 21 and 22, the two legalization initiatives, uh, here in Oregon, it's uh, being uh, backed by hemp.org, uh, which is Paul Stanford. I just talked to Paul Stanford last night. He told me that uh, both uh, each initiative has about 20,000 signatures turned in. Uh, the funding hasn't, hasn't come to fruitation that he was promised, so he, they're struggling. He's looking for funding. Uh, the New Approach Campaign, that's the second initiative, and it's also by a, a different party. Uh, no news on them. They uh, were saying that they were uh, uh, gathering signatures. When you gather signatures, you, you got to gather a thousand to start the initiative process. Once you turn those in, then you can start gathering signatures on the whole initiative. Last I heard, they were still working on the original thousand, so I don't know what the holdup is. But to be honest with you, <clears throat> frankly, and I hate to admit this in public, but for the first time I will admit it in public, uh, I don't think any initiative is going to make it. I hate to say that. But you don't think any of them will? I don't think so. I, mean, not, I, I just don't. I mean, the time is getting shorter and shorter, and I'm not seeing any action. I'm not seeing anybody hitting the streets, and we're running out of time. So I'm, I hope I'm wrong. I don't mean to be negative. How but many uh, signatures do they need total to get it on the ballot? <clears throat> A regular initiative, I think it's 84,000, and then... Uh, or is it maybe 78? I've forgotten exact numbers. A regular initiative, say, say they need 78,000, well, an amendment, constitutional amendment, needs 84,000. It takes more signatures to get it on the ballot. But mm. they want to go over it because they have to make up for any bad signatures they may have. So Yeah, that they, makes sense. So, yeah, so if, say, say the limit was, uh, say, 85,000, well, they want to turn in, you know, like 110 or 120,000 to make sure they have enough 
legitimate where they do have the uh, required it number. Does so sound like they're off to a slow start, but they're still <coughs> they off to a really yeah they walked to a slow 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 start. They missed all the good weather uh, gathering, a good time to gather chicken to shears and decent weather. So I'm trying to say uh, that's gone. So now we're into going through the dead of winter, and we have until the first of July uh, and. Uh, so I don't know, like I said, I hope I'm wrong. And, and last year, Measure 80 looked really, uh, it didn't look like Measure 80 was gonna get on the ballot last year, and it, and it did make it, it did make it in the end. So I don't know, time will, time will tell, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm really disappointed. I thought we'd see a lot more uh, real action going this time. So anyway, let's uh, cover the Growers Few Patients in more detail. I mentioned earlier, it's a new website, uh, no cost. You can, it's free to sign up. Uh, everybody keeps their anonymity. Uh, if you want to communicate personally, there, the option is, there is an option to do that. Uh, but it's a great way for patients to get together with growers and growers to get together with patients. It's a hard relationship to find and make work, but they do and uh, it's possible. So uh, even though if you had a bad, uh, and many people have, have a bad experience with the grower patient relationship, you still got to keep trying because there are out there and there are good people out there that, that really want to help. And this is what I sent out recently to all my email lists. Uh, I wrote our super tech or our core hemp fest volunteer and, and occasional ECTV crew member Zener <coughs> wrote, this is when he announced the website, I have recently created a website to address a very pertinent issue in the medical cannabis movement. There is a <coughs> great disconnect between many growers and patients. Many growers have medicine, but are at a loss to find a patient. Conversely, there are many patients that are, or could be, in desperate need of a grower. By joining our message board, you can help build our community of growers, patients, and all others who have something useful to contribute. Please consider this opportunity to network with our community to share your wants, needs, and desires. The main concept here is to have a respectful, useful, and functional place to share information helpful to the growers and patients community. Wherever you are, if you have something not harmful and relevant to contribute, we would love to have you as a part of our community. That's www.growers, the number two, patients.net. And in my own comment, I sent along, I said, this has been a long time frustration of mine, finding growers to grow for patients. Continually, I've encountered growers looking for patients and patients looking for growers. The problem has been trying to connect them. The Oregon law is quite rigid and adds difficulty and expense to the process. I know at least one organization that tried to provide that service and eventually quit due to the drama that evolved. When a grower-patient relationship went sour, somehow the organization ended up receiving blame. They eventually quit as it wasn't worth the trouble. This forum is available and people can can work with each other without any organization involved. This seems like a great idea to me and I urge all to participate. So uh, definitely I highly recommend it. Uh, this way can, people can deal with each other and I think it's a great solution, but it's just a tool and you've got to pick it up and use it. It's always gonna make it work. And so, so many times I've told patients about tools and they don't pick them up. So I'm it's telling you again. They started it at the end of December and they've already got quite a few members coming in. That's right, so next segment, we'll be back. Coming up. Do you suffer from fear of losing your election? Are you terrified that voters will discover you've done nothing to improve their lives? Maybe it's time you talk to your spin doctor about Incarcerex. In clinical trials, Incarcerex has been shown effective at reducing election-related anxieties by making voters think you're doing something about the drug problem. It's simplistic and fast-acting. If your problems continue or get worse, you can always double or triple your dose of Incarcerex. Whether it's addiction, therapeutic use, or just casual use, there's an Incarcerex plan for every American. Best of all, taxpayers, not you, will foot the bill. So talk to your spin doctor about Incarcerex today. Common side effects include loss of civil liberties, police corruption, racial injustice, increased terrorism, spread of HIV and AIDS, and violent crime. Bloated prisons are also a common side effects. Stop taking incarcerex if bloating lasts longer than 20 years. If you're trying to balance the budget, keep families together, or protect human rights, incarcerex may not be right for you. Do not mix incarcerex with the Constitution or common sense. So start taking incarcerex and keep pretending you're doing something about the drug problem.
And welcome back. I forgot to announce that uh, this is the first 2014 production of Eugene, Eugene I can't even pronounce it, Eugene Cannabis TV. So uh, welcome to the, uh, the first 2014 show. Our friend Jeremy here with us, and we're going through news stories and articles and editorials. Uh, this is an interesting one about the registered guard, and uh, this was dated uh, December 26th, and I believe, if, I'm pretty sure that this is the third editorial, and I don't mean letter to the editor, this is from the newspaper itself, the editorial board, calling for uh, legislatures to look at legalization of marijuana and look into doing a uh, ballot, or initiative themselves to put on the ballot. Because they're saying if they don't do it, if they don't do it, then the uh, activists uh, will, and that's what we've just been talking about. Where there's three initiatives now that we're trying to get going through, uh, trying to get voted on. So <clears throat> the thing that tickles me is that uh, these editorials always talk about how they want it done right, and the legislatures better do it. Well, I like to come back and say, the legislatures get it right. Are we talking about the same group of people? Are we talking about the same group of people that redid the uh, Oregon? Uh, school speed limit laws here about three years ago and then had to come back the next year and redo it because they screwed it up so bad it was unworkable. And are we talking about that, that legislature? Uh, so, you know, they're, <laughs> they're all pretty much a bunch of clowns as far as my, my, I'm concerned. But anyway, uh, there are initiatives coming up and I'd certainly rather see one of ours. But anyway, according to the uh, Oregonian, they're, now they're coming with the, the uh, one of the callbacks that people complain about pot is the children. we got to protect the children. So. Here we go, uh, protecting youth from pot. Uh, again, this is, this is state lawmakers should consider how to protect teens. A new federal report showing that the percentage of U.S. high school students who smoke marijuana is rising, while the use of alcohol and most other drugs is falling. Should get the full attention of Oregon lawmakers who are considering a law that would allow state residents to use marijuana for recreational purposes. That's not really a bad thing if the teenagers are dropping other drugs <laughs> and dropping alcohol, they're going for the less harmful drug. I mean, they're going to do it anyways. They're <laughs> going to do it whether it becomes legal or it doesn't become legal. So I, I don't really see why they should be so hard on the teenagers when they're choosing the less dangerous of the things that are offered to them. Exactly. Excellent point, uh, Jeremy. Excellent point. That's in the first paragraph. <laughs> so that's, yeah, a good point. Uh, and that's exactly right. Uh, and, you know, this is some of the fear mongering that they've done. Uh, I say they, the, the anti-pot movement in general, uh, by saying that, uh, well, for instance, medical marijuana, they always said, oh, medical marijuana is going to increase the pot use among teens. I, they actually have shown that where medical marijuana has gone into effect, teen use has gone down. Uh, so uh, it's just like they said that uh, with dispensaries in the neighborhood, crime will go up. Well, in California, they had a situation uh, where dispensaries uh, were legal, then they were illegal, and then they went back legal again. And so they have a very unique situation to check statistics, and guess what? Crime didn't go up when the dispensaries were uh, running. They, it went down, just the opposite of what the fear mongers are telling us. So, yeah, it's just propaganda to exactly. try and get us not to vote for it. Yeah. So the second paragraph, the report released last week by the National Institution of Drug Abuse raises concerns that the relaxation of restrictions on marijuana, which can now be sold legally for medical purposes in 20 states and the District of Columbia, is encouraging use of drug among two teens. As the Institute's director, Dr. Norma uh, Volkow, told the New York Times, the acceptance of medical marijuana in multiple states leads to the sense that if it's used for medical purposes, then it can't be harmful. <laughs> Just like Oxycontin. <laughs> That's a bad connection. Uh, if legal dosage of pot for medical purposes was helped to increase uh, marijuana usage among teens, then it seems likely that legalization for recreational purposes could do the same, perhaps to a much greater degree. Yeah, but what's the worst thing to give them um, <laughs> basically speed with their Ritalin and other or drugs for ADD or to give them medical marijuana and help them be peaceful and help them not feel suicidal and feel like themselves instead of being all doped up on these drugs that don't really help them. Exactly, we got such a meth problem and yet come to find out <clears throat> the reason we have such a meth problem is because marijuana is illegal. People can't get 
a drug that they enjoy and it's easy on them, but they can get meth and it's cheaper and it's easier to get. So they get that, they get that high. And so now they're using a, a nasty chemical again because of prohibition of, of marijuana. Uh, it's always an irony to me when uh, they have marijuana is illegal, so the kids want to get that high, and so they go out and they start buying synthetic marijuana, and now they're having serious, serious medical effects from it. Here they are using a synthetic thing. To, uh, not, I mean, the, the thing that's illegal is less harmful, so it's just completely opposite, and we all know that, and that's one of the reasons why change is coming. People are becoming aware of that and waking up to the fact. Uh, it says, Oregon legislatures moved to legalize and regulate medical marijuana dispensaries earlier this year and are considering whether to refer an up or down vote to Oregonians next year on whether the state should permit the rec recreational use of marijuana under a strategy favored by Senator, uh, Senator, State Senator Floyd Pazanski, Democrat Eugene, a yes vote on the 2014 measure would authorize the legislature to draft legislation that would regulate the growth, processing, sale, taxation, and use of medical marijuana. Uh, rec 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 hmm? Recreational marijuana. Uh, yes, excuse me, rec recreational marijuana. Now, the, uh, uh, what he's talking about is the new approach, in, in essence that third initiative that we talk about, the New Approach Initiative. That one is uh, what they were working on in the legislature, and uh, if we couldn't, if we, we've uh, basically been telling them if they don't accept, uh, get something on the ballot, that we're gonna do an initiative. And so this is the initiative, New Approach. And uh, so uh, Floyd Brzezanski, uh is uh, wanting to do it through the legislature. It says if, and it goes on to say, if state lawmakers don't put a legalization initiative on next year's ballot, pro-marijuana activists have said they may do so on their own. Last year, Oregon voters defeated a deeply flawed ballot measure that would have allowed anyone but minors to grow and possess unlimited amounts of marijuana for personal use. While ballot measure 80 failed, 46% of uh, voters supported the in initiative, a, a percentage that has been uh, pro uh, has prompted many to predict the passage of a legalization initiative is inevitable. Yeah, I personally, I didn't really think that Measure 80 was that flawed. Exactly, and I don't either. And a lot of the blanks, a lot of the questions that it left open that people criticized it for were, uh, were on purpose. It was for the legislature to... Uh, uh, to fill in the blanks. Exactly, and exactly. And figure so, out how to regulate it. So they're trying to make it more workable and then got criticized because it was vague, you know. So it's one of those things you just you can't win. Uh, if the, the, see, and, and they're saying that uh, if so they are inevitable, so if that prediction is accurate, then the new survey on teen usage makes a compelling argument for state lawmakers, not marijuana activists, to take the lead, take the lead role on legalization and for the legislature to ensure that any new marijuana laws include strong protections for underage Oregonians. Some legalization advocates might point to a measure 80 provision that would have required the state to fund accurate drug education in schools. But their version of accurate could, would probably conflict with the views of health experts who cite a growing body of evidence that adolescent uh, brains, which are not yet fully developed and susceptible to changes in uh, cognitive function and performance caused by marijuana usage. Well, yeah, uh, the true version is different from that because it doesn't harm their brain. It doesn't have anything to do with how their brain and will grow. It just helps them get through everything and helps them stay away from harmful drugs. That's right. It says, citing the latest uh, federal statistics, the annual institute's annual sur survey says more than 12% of eighth graders and 36% of seniors at public and private schools around the country say they have smoked marijuana in the past year. 60% of high school seniors said they do not regard routine marijuana usage as harmful, a 5% increase over the previous year's survey. So it sounds to me like the people are getting educated. <laughs> yeah, and it also sounds like if, if it's 60% that you're saying they don't regard it as harmful, there's probably at least another 20% that were fearful to answer honestly. Mm -hmm. Given the likelihood that recreational use of marijuana will be approved in Oregon, state lawmakers are right 
to lay the groundwork for a balanced, practical measure, one that provides effective protections for vulnerable young people. So that's what the Register Guard said on December 26th. Uh, so if, uh, that's a great idea for a letter to the editor if you'd like to write in and comment on it. So. Th this one looks like it was a letter to the editor for mm -hmm. the Register Guard. It says, recreational pot use isn't an issue. Rules are coming. Good. A f December 15 editorial dispensing pot was concerned about the medical use of marijuana by I dispensary employees who are also licensed medical marijuana users on the dispensary premises. What caught my attention was the question of how many medical marijuana users actually need the drug for medical purposes aside. That, that seems like a bad idea akin to allowing bartenders to consume alcohol on the job. That, that was a real head scratcher. Doesn't it mean that the editors weren't setting aside the issue of non-medical use of medical marijuana at all? I think ink, that's what it meant because as isn't alcohol a recreational drug? And isn't that why bartenders aren't supposed to consume it on the job? Maybe the newspaper's concerns should be addressed in a measure er, legalizing the recreational use of marijuana. And that was by uh, Gary Greger in North Bend, so I appreciate the uh, letter of the editor, and that's great. So we got to get wrap it up and get out of here, but I want to tell you one more time, uh, donation, uh, you can have a t-shirt for a donation, it helps out the Hemp Fest fundraiser. Get a hold of us through our email, uh, dank, dank, dankbagman at hotmail.com. Get a hold of us. Any questions, any information you need, call us. I mean, get a hold of us by email. So we're going to be out, and we'll see you next week. If you're an adult who enjoys a good beer, there's a similar product you might want to know about. One without all the calories and serious health problems. Less toxic so it doesn't cause hangovers or overdose deaths, and it's not linked to violence or reckless behavior. Marijuana. Less harmful than alcohol, and time to treat it that way. For more information, visit marijuanaissafer.org.